Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to another episode of Bedtime Stories. I'm your host, Jamila Gafoor. Now, it's so wonderful that you've joined me today. Have you all brushed your teeth? And are you all cosy in your pyjamas? Very good. So, let's get started. I have a very special story for you today. It's called The Story of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The story of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Long ago in Mecca, a boy was born to a noble family in the land of Arabia. This place was a hot desert valley in which stood the Kaaba, the house of Allah. The Kaaba was built by two prophets, Ibrahim Alayhi Salam and his son Ismail. The tribes who lived in Arabia worshipped statues and statues that were made of stone and wood. The boy's father, Abdullah, was, was the son of Ab Abdul Muttalib, who was sent from the noble family of Banu Hashim of the Quraysh tribe of Ismail. Abdullah died before his son was born. His mother was Amina. As soon as her son was born, she sent the good news to his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. The grandfather was very overjoyed and very overwhelmed. He was so happy that it was a boy and they named him Muhammad, peace be upon him. Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family were descendants of the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. As soon as Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born, he was sent to live in the deserts. There were lots of foster mothers who looked after his babies his foster mother, her name was Halima. Halima's family was very poor. When Muhammad, peace be upon him, arrived, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his blessings on Halima and her family. After many months of drought and the rain came down, soon there was plenty of food and water for the sheep, camels and for her whole family. Life in the desert was good now for the babies as there was fresh air, water and plenty of space for them to run around. Suddenly, one day, out in the desert when Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his foster brothers were playing, an angel was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify the body of the young Muhammad, peace be upon him. Halima's kids were frightened and they ran home to tell their mother. One day Halima knew it was time for Muhammad, peace be upon him, to go back to his mother. Amina was very happy to have her beloved son back home after six years in the desert. Soon after Muhammad, peace be upon him, returned, she took him to Medina to visit his father's grave. On the way back, unfortunately, Amina died. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was now an orphan and had to return to his grandfather in Mecca. <coughs> he was only eight years old when his grandfather died. His grandfather was very fond of him and loved him like his own son. After death, his grandfather Abu Talib, his uncle, was so happy to look after and protect him. The Quraysh believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they did not worship Allah alone. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sad at what was happening around him, but he could not help. <clears throat> Often he would go up to the mountains alone and think, and he would think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created everything around him. Around the Kaaba, there were many idols made of wood and stones, which Quraysh worshipped. Muhammad, peace be upon him, loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knew that these idols could not help or protect these people. So they were worshipping idols, but they did not know that the, the idols did not protect them. As a young boy, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, worked as a shepherd, looking after the sheep in the mountains. 
when he was only 12 years old, his uncle took him on his first trade journey to the, in a caravan to Syria. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was known and known all around in Mecca as the Al Amin, the honest and the truthful. The Al Amin means honest and truthful. When Muhammad, peace be upon him, was 25, 25 years old, he worked for a noble woman called Khadija. She made Muhammad, peace be upon him, in charge of the trade caravan in Syria, along with her slave. Khadija, Rajallahu Anha, was so pleased with the success of Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Syria, that they got married soon after his return. They were happily married and they had two sons and four daughters. His son and his daughters died before him, except for Fatima. The Kaaba was very old. A recent flood in Mecca Valley had damaged the walls. The whole tribe of the Quraysh wanted to rebuild the Kaaba. When the walls were firmly in place, the tribes began to quarrel. They were quarreling and fighting over which one had the right to place the black stone, a stone that was sent from the heavens by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before a fight could break out, a leader of one of the tribes said, let the first one to enter the place of the Kaaba be the judge. At that very moment, Muhammad, peace be upon him, Al Amin, the truthful, was walking towards them. All the tribes were so happy. They were so happy to see him. When the tribes told him their problems, he had an excellent idea. He asked them to place the black stone on a piece of cloth for the four leaders to lift each corner. Then he placed the stone in its correct position and all the tribes went home peacefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided Muhammad, peace be upon him, from a very young age. He was special. He kept away from the Quraysh who disobeyed Allah and did not listen to him. Muhammad, peace be upon him, always loved to visit his favourite cave in the mountains called Hira. There he would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and count all his blessings. One day, when Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in deep thought in his favourite cave, an angel named Jibril came down from the heavens with a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibril said, read. Muhammad, peace be upon him, replied, I cannot read. Jibril hugged and squeezed Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, asking him to read for the second time. He said, read, O Muhammad. Muhammad, peace be upon him, replied, I cannot read. This time, Jibril hugged and squeezed him still harder and said, read, read in the name of your Lord who created everything around you. Muhammad, peace be upon him, who could neither read nor write, finally repeated the words after the angel Jibril. With the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty and the All-Wise. It was so scary, he ran home to his wife Khadija and said, cover me, cover me. Khadija radiallahu anha asked Muhammad, peace be upon him, what happened to him? So he told her the whole story. The angel Jibril in the cave, Khadija radiallahu anha, believed his story without a doubt and said that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never disgrace him for he was a good man he helped others Khadija radiallahu anha along with Muhammad peace be upon him went to meet her cousin Waraka bin Nawafal a blind man with lots of knowledge about Allah subhanahu ta'ala He asked Muhammad, peace be upon him, to tell him all that he had seen and heard in the cave in Mount Hira. As soon as Muhammad, peace be upon him, had finished telling him his story, Waraka, the blind man, said to Muhammad, peace be upon him, that the angel Jibril was the same one that was sent to Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, by Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, before him. I wish that I was younger or live until the day our people would drive you out of Mecca, said Waraka. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was very shocked. Not long after meeting Waraka, died. Not long after meeting Waraka, he died. And the angel Jibril was not to be seen for some time. Khadija was the first to accept Islam. Islam is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and not to worship anybody else, to worship him without joining partners. Muhammad, Muhammad peace be upon him, freed slaves. Zayd, his best friend Abu Bakr and his cousins Ali, they all accepted Islam. They then called their families and their friends to accept Islam. All those who obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow his messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him, are called Muslims. Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught the Muslims about Allah in secret, in a house owned by Al-Arkan. He warned the Muslims to stay away from the Quraysh who lived in Mecca and worshipped idols. There were many idols surrounding the Kaaba, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was built by Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail. As time went by, it was getting harder and harder for Muslims to keep their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a secret. One day the angel Jibril came with a message for Muhammad peace be upon him, asking him to rise and warn people of the Quraysh to worship Allah and Allah alone openly, not in secret. <clears throat> As dawn was breaking one morning, Muhammad peace be upon him stood on a mountain called As-Safa. Then he called out loudly, Ya Sahaba, all the people heard him and gathered around him at the foot of the mountain. Then he asked the people a question. He said, if I said there were horsemen behind the mountain waiting to attack, would you believe me? They all replied, Yes, for they knew without a doubt Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the Al-Amin, the truthful. Then he warned the people of the terrible punishment for those who did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and follow him, the true messenger and the slave of Allah. Abu Lahab, Muhammad's uncle, yelled in anger, May you perish, may you perish. Soon those who had heard Muhammad, peace be upon him, accepted his call to Islam. Now the Quraysh leaders were very angry with Muhammad, peace be upon him, for calling their people away from the worship of the idols. His uncle, Abu Lahab, 
and his wife were the worst troublemakers. They did not like him at all. They called Muhammad, peace be upon him, a magician. They called him a liar, even though they all knew he was truthful. The invitation to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone did not stop with the people around him. Even He even called the people who visited Mecca with the trade caravans, the poor, the orphans, the slaves, they all accepted Islam readily, willingly. Abu Bakr would often free the slaves by buying them from their masters who were harassing them. Bilal was one of the first slaves who were freed. When the Quraysh could not stop their people from following Muhammad, peace be upon him, they angrily went to his uncle, Abu Talib. They said to him, Abu Talib, your nephew is stopping them from worshipping the gods and the forefathers. Abu Talib conveyed the message to Muhammad, peace be upon him. He replied, By Allah, if they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I will never give it up until, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me victory or I perish in my attempt. Abu Talib loved his nephew and promised to support and protect him against the Quraysh. The Quraysh, in return, continued to harass Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all the Muslims. They threw stones, they put thorns in his path, and they called him all the bad names. One day at the Kaaba, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was peacefully praying when Abu Lahab and his friends threw camel, camel entrails on his back while he was prostrating, Fatima, his daughter, saw this and rushed to help him. On that day, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, raised his hands up and asked Allah. He said, O oh Allah, punish Abu Lahab and his friends. Muhammad, peace be upon him and his followers, continued calling the people to Islam. The Quraysh leaders offered him all the wealth and all the land and promised to make him their king if he would stop calling their people to Islam. He kindly refused, saying, this was a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He who obeys Allah and follows his messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, will enter paradise and the hereafter. Those who deny and refuse to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone will have a terrible punishment in the hell fire. There was nothing more worse than the Quraysh could offer Muhammad, peace be upon him. They asked him to show them miracles so that they could believe he was the true messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was on a clear night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, split the moon in half. This miracle did not convince the people. It did not convince the people of Quraysh. They still denied without accepting Muhammad peace be upon him as the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Life in Mecca was now getting very unbearable for the Muslims. Muhammad, peace be upon him, asked some of the early Muslims to seek help from the Abyssinian from, for an idea. He called, he called Al-Najashi. Fifteen of his companions sailed to Abyssinia where they were all welcomed. This did not step 
This did not stop the Quraysh from going after them. They asked the king to return them to Mecca. But the generous king said that he would look after all the Muslims and drove the Quraysh back. At this time, two of the strongest men in Quraysh accepted Islam. One was Hamza, the uncle of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the other was Umar bin al-Khattab, who originally came with the idea of killing Muhammad, peace be upon him. <coughs> the Quraysh were even more angry now with the family of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his followers that they had forced to live in the valley in the eastern part of Mecca. The Muslims lived there for three long years with hardly enough food and no water for themselves. Some of the families were in Mecca felt so sorry for them and sent food and water secretly. Finally, the Quraysh leaders who had sympathy for the Muslims let them return to their homes in Mecca. The Muslims returned home with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the most merciful. Ten years after Muhammad, peace be upon him, started his call to Islam, two of his closest companions and his uncle, Abu Talib, and his beloved wife, Khadija, radiallahu anha, died. They were in great loss. And to him, they were, there were years of grief and sadness because his uncle and his wife died. So that was the story of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So what did we learn from this story? It's about being strong, having faith, and don't let anyone tell you any different. As idol worshipping is not allowed in Islam, we only believe in Allah alone and worship Allah, only Allah alone. Otherwise, everything else is not allowed. And Muslim means being a believer. Thank you so much for joining me today for bedtime stories and I hope to see you again soon. Have a good night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.